State of Play, the pre-election day edition. Let's bring in Stephanie Hansen, former Newcastle County president, and now with the law firm of Young Conaway, Stargett and Taylor. Michael Stafford is also with us, an attorney and MSNBC contributor. So let's start off with the rematch between Republican Representative Jeffrey Spiegelman and Lynn Newland. In 2012, 200 votes actually separated the two. So how do you see things shaping up this year. I, I see a Spiegelman victory and I think the key here is going to be in the 11th as it is in a lot of these other races across the state. It's not a presidential election year. Um, there's going to be a depressed turnout. Um, that's going to benefit Republican candidates up and down the ticket and I think you know in, in Jeff's case a 200 vote victory in a year where both uh, Markel and Obama were on the ballot translates into a wider margin this cycle. And then last time they did have a, another candidate. It was a third party libertarian, uh, also, I guess, stretched out the votes a bit. Right. So, yeah. And I, th I think they're generally going to trend more towards the Republican in that particular part of the con of, of the county too. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on to Middletown. Jason Hortiz is up against Kevin Hensley, open house seat since uh, uh, it's an open house seat since Republican Walker has retired. Uh, the Delaware Liberal did an analysis predicting Hensley could actually win. So what do you think? Well, a Republican has held that seat for a long time. Uh, Becky was, Rebecca Walker was actually the first Democrat in quite some time to, to, to hold that seat. So it will be, I think it's going to be a tough one for the Democrats to hold on to. And I think particularly now, uh, Here's what I think is happening like, with, the, with the election. I think people are beginning to have all these discussions with their employers about health care now. Now is open enrollment time, or we're coming up onto open enrollment time. And the, and the cost of the Affordable Care Act is beginning to filter down to everyday working people who go out and vote. And so those that may have been a little more inclined to vote Democrat in the past, I think are not as happy to vote Democrat this time. So you may, I think the Republicans are going to see a little bit of a bump from that. That plus it's a, an off year election. Republicans tend to get out percentage wise more people than Democrats do. So in close races where you've got Ortiz, where you've got Spiegelman and Newland that we were just talking about, I think those are the races that the Republicans may pull it out. I don't know that, uh, I don't know that uh, Hensley will pull it out over Ortiz, but I think it's gonna be very close. Well, okay. I mean, the ninth, that's my, that's my home district. Yeah. Um, Dick Cathcart held that seat for many years. And then when Dick um, retired, when Becky Walker originally won in 2010, it was Walker versus a guy named John Marino. Marino, and this, remember, this is the Christine O'Donnell year. This is the year where Republicans are getting thrashed up and down the ticket. Yes. Walker wins that race by about 500 votes. And, and when, you look at, when you look at how the vote played out uh, ED by ED that year, it was really, it was Brennan Estates, it was Delaware City. I mean, the, the election districts that John performed poorly in, or more poorly in, aren't part of the district anymore. And so that narrow margin, and then in 2012, Walker ran unopposed. Now we've got this rate. I, I, think, I think Hensley pulls it out. I, I, it may not even be as close as some people think it's going to be, quite honestly. Well, no matter uh, what voters say on November 4th, the Democratic, d the Delaware will still remain a Democratic state. You know, oh, right. correct. Yeah, I mean, the, right. the Republicans aren't going to be getting back control of the House or the Senate. No, yeah. no, no. It, it's just on these more local races that I think if you're going to see a change, that's where you're going to see it. Mm. Well, let's uh, take some thoughts. I would love to hear what you guys think of the treasurer's race and as well as the auditor's race. Let's start with the treasurers. Uh, I th I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think that I'm surprised that Sean Barney hasn't come out stronger. It's like, where is the Democratic candidate? You know, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned that the Democrats think that they're going to have a walk with this one, and they may not. I think that the Republicans are really pushing on this particular race, and they may very well pull it out. Colin Benini did well in 2010 running for this office. Um, and again, that was a year where Democratic turnout was inflated by Christine, by Christine O'Donnell. Simpler is campaigning hard. Barney doesn't seem to be out there very much. At least that's what people are saying. So it, on the other hand, Simpler isn't as, Colin Benini, whatever you want to say about him and his performance as a senator, he's a personable guy. He's a guy you can sit down and have a beer with. He, mm -hmm. he, he, he relates to people well. I don't think Simpler has that same dynamic. So does he do as well as, as Colin did? Does he do a little bit worse? I don't know. I think it's going to be a very close race. I think it's going to be four or five 
percentage points either way. And then the last race you mentioned will be tough to call the auditor's race. The auditor's race. I mean, it, it, incumbency has major advantages. That said, we're a democratic state. The Democrats have, you know, a, a major registration advantage over the, over the Republicans. And Brenda's running a really good race. I mean, she's a solid candidate. She's probably one of the better candidates or opponents that, that Tom Wagner's faced in years. Mm -hmm. And I, I, if, if, if I say if, if Brenda wins, if Brenda beats Tom, then Barney beats Simpler. Then it's a Democratic sweep. But if Tom can beat Brenda, to me, that's telling me because of the turnout, maybe Simpler beats beats Barney in that scenario. I think the Republicans, though, are saying this is our last statewide elected official that we've got in office right now, and there's going to be a lot of sympathy, even with Democrats, <clears throat> to keep that Republican seat. Well, we shall see on November the 4th, and hopefully we'll have you guys back on the 5th so you can break everything down. Stephanie Hansen and Michael Stafford, thanks so much for being here, and thank you for watching State of Play.